good morning. Uh, thank you so much, President Vahan, Professor Damiani, and the event organizers. It's an honor to be here at University of Sao Paulo, interacting uh, with prof professors, with the audience, and whom I dedicate a great part of success in my career. A special thanks uh, to Professor Marcel Martucci, whom I learned the principles of computer architecture and software engineering uh, back to 80s at the Escola Politecnica. And also, thank you so much, Mr. Professor Plonsky and other professors who have been mentors of my two daughters who have graduated very recently at Escola Politecnica. And I am Marcel Gawa and leader of technology, media, and telecommunications of uh, Deloitte Brazil. And I take part of a, smart, a small group of uh, uh, global partners within Deloitte to study uh, the emerging technologies and their impacts in the countries, in the societies. And um, usually um, we get together in different parts of the world uh, debating how those technologies will impact our econ the, the economy of each country. And I represent uh, this group, uh, I represent Latin America in this group. And usually when I come back to Brazil and I become anxious because we, I, I feel that we have so many things to do in Brazil. And uh, that's the reason that I usually uh, prepare reports, prepare, prepare insights, uh, point of views, uh, to analyze the impact of those technologies to the Brazilian government and uh, regulatory agencies and the Brazilian companies. And for me, a great part of the current social, political, economic instability in the world is due to digital gap among communities societies and countries. So technology absorption, technology creation is critical for a country development. And Brazil needs to speed up uh, this, this absorption. So uh, the idea today is to explain a little bit about blockchain. And uh, blockchain is, uh, is one of those emerging technologies that we needed to absorb and we needed to identify how Brazil we incorporate in those process. And uh, basically, uh, what blockchain is? Blockchain is a distributed ledger yeah, where you can record information and, uh, uh, so that you could have a transparency you could have traceability of those transactions that are recorded in the chain. And uh, it's a very uh, secure way to record keeping. It could be a virtual transfer of assets and also could be uh, implemented as a smart contract. So those are the three main applications of blockchain. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, we have uh, uh, some mis misconceptions about the blockchain. Usually in Brazil, uh, we think of blockchain and Bitcoin. And uh, what Bitcoin means is that uh, the assets that are transferred is money. And uh, it's the application of blockchain is not or specifically for money, you can uh, register goods, you can register contracts. So uh, uh, most of the people in Brazil uh, do this kind of misconception that the blockchain means uh, Bitcoin. And also, we still have some challenges in implementing the blockchain. Of course, this is not a, a global large-scale implementation in our across sectors and uh, there are still some projects and initiatives across the group. And uh, we have still some challenges. There are standards needs to be formatted. It's not, an, uh, we do not have scales, uh, a scale, not enough scale. So not all regula uh, regu uh, regulators in, in the world uh, have accepted this technology. But um, uh, we Deloitte, we have conducted uh, 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 this is the uh, report, I'm sorry, this is the report from World Economic Forum. And uh, it's a picture of uh, the movements of the blockchain in different parts of the world and different parts of sectors. So there is a, a good activity in terms of uh, uh, blockchain in the world. 
the Bitcoin is uh, what we call the, the, the transfer of the money, but there are several other applications of blockchain. And um, uh, with Deloitte, we have conducted uh, research to, with uh, uh, main executives in the United States. And uh, we have identified that uh, several recognize that blockchain is, uh, a, is good, add value to their company. Most of them think about blockchain in terms of security, security is a robust and secure system. The other ones think about that is a, uh, promotes a great efficiency, and the other ones think about the business models and new revenue streams. So there is a recognition in certain countries that blockchain uh, is an important and relevant technology. And uh, when we see uh, the adoption of blockchain, uh, we are in 2018 and we are still in the year of scaling. scaling. And we foresee that in the next two years, uh, we are going to have more and more adoption of uh, blockchain across different sectors, across different, uh, different uh, 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 countries. And uh, that's the reason I think that uh, this kind of event in promoting the discussion of blockchain in Brazil is still is very, very important. And uh, what we have, uh, the relationship uh, between blockchain and fourth industrial revolution. First, I think I need to step back to explain to you what re fourth industrial revolution means. And uh, what means fourth industrial revolution? It's not about uh, putting automation in the plant. It's not about only putting the robots in the plant. Uh, fourth industrial revolution means, for me, two things. One thing is how you can gather, how you can manage it, and how you can use efficiently, intelligently, data across the chain. So this is one thing what, uh, what, what the fourth revolution means. How you better use the data that you can collect within your supply chain. Second, uh, what means fourth re industrial revolution? It's about forming new ecosystems. And what means new ecosystems? Traditionally, we are used to have some sectors that you have a linear supply chain. So you have the, uh, the manufacturers of pieces, manufacturers of the motors, the manufacturers of the auto, uh, autos. So it was, we, we, we used to think about supply chain as a linear linear flow, but the fourth re uh, revolution, we think about uh, uh, forming ecosystems, we, we think about a cir circular supply chain. In this way, uh, there is a strong link between uh, blockchain and uh, industrial revolution. So these are some uh, uh, facts that uh, we can link why blockchain is so important and why the relationship between blockchain and fourth industrial revolution is so relevant. Uh, first is the uh, counterfeit goods accounts for more than four billion in trade annually. Why? Because the systems among different companies are siloed. So since those systems are siloed, it's uh, easy to, uh, to, to, to do some introduction of counterfeit goods into the supply chain. Blockchain will uh, somehow uh, uh, put barriers or uh, you can give uh, uh, traceability so that you can identify better uh, if you have a counterfeit goods. Second, this is really relevant what we have identified. 200 billion of potential losses and 1 million deaths per year from counterfeit meds. This is really, really, and when we go deeper detail in the numbers, this number is extremely relevant in Latin America countries. And uh, this is the way that also blockchain applied in the healthcare life science, it's extremely relevant. Third is that uh, the retailers are facing uh, face the rising consumer demands for transparency. What means? 
Uh, for the new generators, generations, the consumer wants to know better what they are eating. The consumer wants to know better and more what they are wearing. So they want more and more information about uh, 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 the, the goods that the, the, the consumer deals. And also, we have identified the consumer can pay premium if you have a, a, a product that is certified. So, and uh, for example, we here in Brazil, we know pretty well uh, one of uh, our uh, one of the most injuries in our economy that was the carne fraca, the wheat meat. And uh, I'm sure that we, if we have somehow uh, more systems or systems like this that we can prevent fraud, that way we can prevent uh, counterfeit, we can prevent uh, mal malfunctions, uh, bad functions, uh, we could have a better product and then we could have uh, explore new markets of our commodities, of our food. So Brazil that uh, have the food industry so important, it's, I think this could be a very use case for blockchain implementation as well. And um, um, so this is an example of uh, physical commodity trading and uh, implemented by blockchain. So you have here the seller and you have the terminal operator, the terminal, the transport operator, the vessel master, the inspection, and the buyer. Throughout this process, you can register the transactions so that you can avoid fraud, for example. Yeah? You can assert the quality of the 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 the, uh, the 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 product that is from seller to the buyer, and uh, if you combine uh, blockchain with IoT, IoT I don't know if you, many of you uh, uh, you know about IoT is about uh, putting sensors in the object so that you can also collect information not only where the object is but also the status of the object. So. If you can combine the transaction, the virtual transactions with the physical information of the objects that are moved, being moved in the chain, you can even uh, make these systems much more robust, much more transparent. Second is the um, uh, uh, usage for uh, regulatory uh, reporting. So, Regula regulatory federal regulations, regulations, for example, for health, regulations for telecommunications, regulations for food. You can use blockchain so that you can have the transparency of uh, the products that are being commercialized, the products that are being transported, the, the, the products that are being uh, monitored. And you can have more efficiency in the process, transparency, traceability, and immutability of the records. And uh, we believe that uh, we started, we are seeing right now just a piece of the iceberg of the application of the blockchain. We foresee that uh, blockchain can really revolutionize the societies and the industry. So we can trigger new products, new services, new business models. And uh, we, we, we will const constitute a cultural uh, paradigm shift. For example, if we can think about our daily lives in Brazil, I think uh, uh, the best uh, way to understand blockchain is like our cartório. So you go to cartório and then you need to certify that, authenticate that you is you and you sign and the people from cartório will store the data uh, in his system. But when we're implementing blockchain, it's something that is national, could be national. And uh, could be, uh, there will be much more efficiency because the system will do the authentication. For example, when we are going to sell and buy a house, you need to register at the cartório. 
So if the cartório is something that is more electronic, more efficient, you can trust everybody across uh, the nation can see this transaction, it will be more efficient. So in Brazil, I think uh, when I participate in those discussions about applications of blockchain, I consider that Brazil is a perfect fit of uh, uh, several use cases of blockchain. And um, uh, so Deloitte has been involved in several projects across the world, especially global companies that comes, uh, uh, that have subsidiaries in Brazil. And obviously those projects are initiated outside in Europe, US, and someday these projects will come to Brazil in order to engage the Brazilian subsidiary. Where, what I think, and I think what, what I'd like to pose to you as a reflection is, since we have so many use cases, I think we could have opportunity to explore one or two opportunities to start from Brazil, and then we engage later uh, uh, outside uh, other countries. So this is my view. Thank you so much.